What's going on guys, Perry the Entertainer here, giving you guys another video, Raw just went off the air, and I was beginning to think, this is the match, or this is the show that goes after Wrestlemania, the Wrestlemania Aftermath, you really think that? And then just when I thought that, it happened, but I will get to what happened in a bit, first, first thing that happened tonight, we began the show with Triple H basically confronting Undertaker, talking about his match, and teasing retiring, but then says, I'll be ready for whenever you come back. So basically, I think he's teasing that he wants another match with The Undertaker at WrestleMania. He's going to be his 20th victim. Um, I'm, I'm just trying to get to this as fast as possible. Uh, Jim Ross was... Um, commentating tonight and I that was fantastic even for the what 10 minutes that he was commentating for uh, Jerry Lawler versus Jack Swagger um, it was an okay match especially like especially coming off of what happened last night with Jerry Lawler so uh, your winner is technically Jack Swagger Jack Swagger made Jerry Lawler tap out but then the referee decides to reverse the decision because Swagger would not let go of the ankle lock so Jerry Lawler wins Cole being the jerk that he is, I would I would say something bad. He went into his coal mine and he found JR's barbecue sauces. So he took some barbecue sauces, he opened them up, and he sprayed them right at JR. Not the best thing. You could have went this entire show without doing that. Jim Ross, you we really needed the commentary tonight. I was really not think not digging the commentary tonight after Jim Ross was sprayed with uh, his barbecue sauce. So, um, moving on to the next match of the night, Ray Randy Orton and Rey Mysterio versus CM Punk and Cody Rhodes. Um, this match was an okay match as well because obviously these guys are still battered from their WrestleMania Steal the Show matches last night. So, uh, it ended with Randy Orton giving the RKO to CM Punk, I believe. No, Cody Rhodes. He hit Cody Rhodes with it. I'm sorry. Um, we get hype about the Rock, John Cena calling out The Rock tonight. And um, I'm thinking, oh, no, nothing's going to be good from that. Uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin comes out, and he just starts introducing, obviously, from what's on in the back, the Tough Enough cast. Um, I'm not digging Tough Enough this year. Like, I I'll watch it just for the sake of you guys. Like, I might even do a review on it once in a while. But, um... You know, I'm, it just doesn't really look that interesting, really. I mean, it's basically one of your reality shows from VH1 or MTV or E or whatever. But he basically introduces us to the entire cast. And just as he's about to uh, say something, I remember, uh, Miz comes out. Miz comes out and he basically taunts the cast. He's saying, okay, he's going back to when he was... In uh, tough enough in 2004, he's like people are. People said I wasn't gonna make it. Well, look where I am now. They told me to go back to the to the real world. Well, you can't tell me where to go now. And everyone starts chanting one more match for Austin. Everyone thinks Austin is gonna accept and become the next challenger for the WWE title. But as much as I would love to see that. Uh, before anything happened, Alex Riley started attacking uh, Stone Cold. He told everyone, he told the cast to clear, and basically, it was basically just to show, show, hey, I'm a good wrestler, you know. You're you're getting uh, hosted by the one of the best wrestlers in the world. Well, not in the world, but in the WWE. Um, but it was it was a great, it was fantastic actually. I I liked how. Uh, they put the Tough Enough cast in this. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, moving on to a squash match, Alberto Del Rio versus Evan Bourne. Why is Alberto Del Rio still on Raw? I mean, WrestleMania is over. Shouldn't they just go back to their separate shows? But I am a Del Rio fan, obviously. But I'm also an Evan Bourne fan, so I felt really bad watching Evan Bourne get squashed. But Ev or Evan Bourne ends up losing. He ends up tapping out to the cross arm breaker. Uh, for Alberto Del Rio, and um, then starts some promo with Vicky and Dolph. Vicky saying, uh, you know, Snooki got the win. You know, it wasn't them. 
And then Dolph's like, oh, well, you know, you couldn't get the job done, John, so let's see you and Trish Stratus try and get the job done tonight. Dolph Ziggler and Vicky Guerrero versus John Morrison and Trish Stratus. Not the best match you could put up, especially this was the point where I'm like, I'm ready to fall asleep here. Guys, are you serious? This is the aftermath. And once I thought that, well, obviously John Morrison and um, Trish Stratus won. John Morrison hit the Starship Pain on Dolph Ziggler, ends up winning the match. Um, the last match of the night, United States title match, Daniel Bryan versus Sheamus, and as much as I love to say it, this match was terrible. Yes, you heard me, terrible. I did not like this match one bit. Well, I did, I did a little bit, but not, it didn't last very long. Sheamus got the win with the bro kick, I believe. I don't know exactly what happened there. Yeah, he hit the bro kick. Uh, he raises the title high. He starts attacking Daniel Bryan, only to have the debuting Sin Cara come out. He botched the uh, his jumping over the top rope thing. Uh, he kind of fell on his head, and I'm like, okay, that was that supposed to happen? But he ends up destroying Sheamus, and I'm 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 looking at this guy, and I'm like, wow. I mean, I don't even. I'm not really a fan of Lucha Libre people, like, I'm not a fan of Lucha Libre in general. Like, obviously, I told you guys I'm not a fan of Rey Mysterio. Uh, you're luckily to be a fan of Alberto Del Rio, but there's all these guys that I'm not really a fan of, and this guy, Sin Cara, just got my interest from the start. It was better than having him in a match, because if you had him in a match just squash somebody, granted, he did squash your champion, but... It was fantastic the way he did it. He made it look like he's done this before, and he has. So this just interested me from front to finish for this match. And, like, after that, I'm like, really? Okay, the only thing that interests me about this pay-per-view, or not pay-per-view, this show, was Sin Cara debuting. Other than that, this ma this paper, or this, uh, this show gets a 4 out of 10. But as soon as I say that... The John Cena calls out The Rock. John Cena starts taunting The Rock. He's saying, uh, he's, he has his red stuff. I swear, that's just stupid. Um, he's basically saying, you know, a certain someone screwed me up in my match tonight. And I'm not going to name names, but obviously you knew it was The Rock. But, uh, he actually he's out there to congratulate Miz on winning. So, um... I'm checking actually. Cena says the Miz is the most annoying person on earth, but he has shown respect and he has gained everybody's respect. And apparently, The Rock has not gotten Cena's, or Cena has not gotten The Rock's respect. And with that, he calls out The Rock. The Rock comes out about a minute later and they start having this conversation. And Cena's like, oh, you know what? Uh, no, because he started taunting Cena's shirt and he's like, well, I go, I go uh, shopping at designer outfitters or whatever, and you have probably go shop at Baby Bop or something like that because of his red T-shirt that he had on. Um, that was that was funny there, but that's what led up to what Cena did next, and Cena basically asked him for a match, and it happened. It's official. The Rock, the Great One, the People's Champion, the Brahma Bull versus. John Cena, the leader of the C Nation, the poster boy, the whatever, at WrestleMania 28. It's official. I'm I'm actually shocked that they even went through with this. I really am. Oh, baby gap, not baby bat, or whatever I said. That was just amazing. In 2012, WrestleMania 28, the year we're supposed to die. This is probably the reason why we're going to die. We're going to get a perfect match out of this. John Cena, who's the who really just he you know, he entertains little kids really. He's not really an adult person. The Rock is an adult person. The Rock gets all the attention, well not all the attention, but he gets all of the fan base from the adults. I mean, like I don't I don't see why I I agree. I agree. I think I think this match should happen, but I don't think it should happen next year. That's the problem with this. 
They're planning way too ahead. What if they forget this match? What is, what is this is exactly what my dad was telling me. My dad is like, how are how are Cena and The Rock going to hype a match in a year? They have fifty two weeks to hype a match. Obviously, I'm ecstatic about it. This paper, this not paper. Why did I say pay per view again? This show gets a six out of ten. It went up two points for that match. It was not the best show coming off of WrestleMania. But, uh, oh, I forgot to tell you, the core came out and started attacking John Cena and The Rock. The Rock and Cena ended up getting an upper edge, and they started just basically doing their finishers, their signatures. They just started showing everybody, okay, you know what, well, I got the people's elbow, well, I got the attitude adjustment, I got the rock bottom, I got the five-knuckle shuffle. Um, as for my prediction for this match, I'm not sure, really. I might need a few weeks to make a prediction for this match. <sighs> wow. I don't want to rate this... I don't want to rate the show bad, though. I mean, the, the show wasn't that bad, considering there was four matches. But other than that, it was actually an okay show. I mean, I, I rated it averagely. It was an average show, except for the fact that what happened at the end. Out of the end, the end gets a 10 out of 10. That's what. That's how I coexisted that, because everything from the start with Triple H in that to uh, after Sin Cara, that entire was just a 4. I did not like any of that one bit, except for Sin Cara, like I told you. But... <clears throat> The Rock and Cena at WrestleMania 28 in Miami. This actually pisses me off. It really does. Because how are you going to hype a f match in 52 weeks and 361 days? How are you supposed to do that? I swear, I think one of these WWE is going to forget. So The Rock is returning to the ring for one probably final match. If anything, I should have put it at SummerSlam. That's what I was thinking he was going to say. Then he said WrestleMania, and I'm like, Rock, you're blowing yourself out of the water here. What are you going to do? Are you just going to make movies? What are you going to do? There's no way you're going to appear 52 weeks in a row to hype up your match. There's no way Rock is going to do that. Is The Rock just going to leave and then come back? Is Cena going to have the WWE title, and is it going to be a WWE title match? All these questions are going to be answered next year, apparently. This just pisses me off, though. Why can't you just have it at SummerSlam? Everyone was looking forward to it. It's in California, for God's sake. Are you really going to go into Extreme Rules having your WWE Championship match be The Miz versus Stone Cold Steve Austin? Really? I can agree. The United States title match would be a good match. Sin Cara versus Sheamus. Obviously, Sheamus has the power. Obviously, if you guys were watching, Sin Cara has the speed. He's got the cru the cruiser ability. You know what I'm talking about. The The performance level that cruiserweights have. Anyway, <clears throat> you guys got, be sure, I'm going to start hyping something now, be sure to tune to WWE Extreme Rules, uh, I think May 1st, no, I think May 1st, I think May 1st. Uh, if not, I will put the link, I will put the thing in the description. Also, be sure to subscribe. Thank all of my 27 subscribers. I gained just about 7 off of the WrestleMania video that I did last night. I want to thank each and every one of you who watched my WrestleMania video. One of my most watched on this channel, but obviously my most watched is my, extra, my uh, Elimination Chamber review, which got a thousand views off of that. So... Um, that is it for me, guys. Uh, obviously, I'll probably be watching Tough Enough back there. I might make a video on it maybe tomorrow. But, um, that is it for me. Peace out.